So now in this video, we're going to look at making a Schmidt trigger with a couple NPN bipolar junction transistors. So the circuit you see here is what is on the schematic. So I made this uh, diagram a while ago. I'm going to make some modifications to this. But in any case, if you've made a uh, switch circuit with a bipolar junction transistor, in this case an NPN, and you give it a changing voltage, there is not really even a specific point as the voltage slide where the load turns on and off. It kind of fades on and off and uh, it may uh, flicker on and off too if uh, the voltages are right. So the way we have this wired up we solve that problem. I'm going to turn the trim pot down, the voltage down. You see the LED suddenly turned off. Instantly turned off. I'm going to slowly raise the voltage and the LED slowly turned on. As you can see, it's not an exact spot where it turns on and off. If it's already off, I have to slide it farther up from where it turned off to turn it back on. And now that it is on, I have to slide it further down than the spot where it turned on to turn it off. So that's called hysteresis. So now, on the sheet here, I wrote 22 ohms. I think I get better results if I use 120 ohms, so more resistance. And so far, 120 ohms has been the uh, maximum resistance. So it's this resistor here that uh, really sets the hysteresis. It's connected to the emitter of both of the uh, transistors and then goes to ground right there. And so now I think I got to raise this a little further, I believe to get the uh, LED on, but uh, in any case, there it's on, and I think I got a little more wiggle room right there. And uh, so, in any case, you can definitely see that hysteresis there. I have to turn it over an area to get it to change states. It doesn't change states right at the same spot. So, we're going to uh, turn the power supply off. I have it set to five volts right there and limited to 30 milliamps of current. We can look at that right there. And that may have saved some components while I was uh, prototyping this. We will look at uh, why coming up. So, in any case, we will shift uh, these components out of the way and do a step-by-step -step build, because I think that helps. I'm not organizing this very well. I think that helps make it easier to see what is going on than a bunch of uh, components there and the schematic. So to begin with, the main component in this is the NPN bipolar junction transistor. So I'm using a 2N2222. Any NPN bipolar junction transistor should work. Its pin layout may be different, but if it starts with 2N, such as the 2N2222, it probably has the same pin layout. So we're looking at the flat side right now. And this is a magnetic screwdriver. I didn't mean to do that, but uh, we'll just keep going with it. Left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and right pin is the collector. So we're going to turn it this way. So now you can see here that we put the collector of uh, this transistor to the uh, base of that transistor. So we will plug that right there. That jumper will bring the collector to the base of the other transistor. Now, we don't have to use 470 ohms, but uh, I'm going to put 470 ohms from the positive rail to same row as that jumper, which is also where the collector is for that NPN, bipolar junction transistor. And let's uh, put the 100, or 470 ohm I mean, resistor there. So that's going to be one spot away from the base of the transistor as you can see there. So positive rail it's right there. It's one spot away from the base. And again, same pin layout. Left pin emitter, middle pin base, right pin collector. And so there's the 470 ohm resistor to the uh, positive rail. We're going to use 5 volts. So if I swivel it this way, now the collector is above the uh, base. So base going to the jumper, collector going to that resistor, right there. And so, 
I have a jumper to the negative rail there. That's so I can take an LED as a load. I don't have it on the schematic there. But uh, this will let us know when the output is high. And so that will be in relationship to ground. So we're going to put the long lead, the anode, to where the collector is and the resistor. Short lead, the cathode, we're putting to that jumper to the negative rail so that it will conduct. If we put it in backwards, it just won't light up no matter what. It's a diode, light emitting diode. And I'm going to take uh, this jumper and just connect the two emitters because they're off by a row. And so this will jump the gap there, and it's not terribly large, so it's not obscuring a lot. But uh, there we go. Connecting the two emitters, as you can see there. And the uh, main component that really sets this uh, hysteresis is the uh, resistor to the negative rail. So it's a uh, red red for two and then black for zero and then we have a gold band there and uh, for the uh, the multiple flyer so that makes it a 22 ohm resistor unfortunately the leads are bent so there you go hopefully I bent them back alright and there we go so now the signal that we are giving we are going to use a trim pot and if I put the the uh, one side directly to the positive rail. I'm actually going to do that with this jumper here. Unfortunately, we'll give a full signal once I give uh, this jumper to the output and then to the base of that transistor. So that's how you conduct how well that conducts. And uh, so now we will uh, turn the power on. So remember, this is what you don't do. So turn the power on. We have to be careful where we set this trim pot. So you can see I put a maximum of 30 milliamps of current on the yeah, power supply there. If I turn this all the way up, we have a direct connection right there to the base. And that's going through that resistor there. And so if I didn't limit the current, there we go, it did hit 30. It would provide more current. So the meter is protecting the uh, circuit right now. There you can see, I can get it to go up. This isn't an exact, uh, not, not really meter, it's just telling us what it is outputting. Now it's showing us voltage. So, which was kind of interesting, that was three something. Oh, that's because we limited the current. It has to drop the voltage. So. We don't want to go all the way to the positive rail with the trim pot. That is the main thing. So we take, in this case, a 1 kilo ohm resistor and put it to the positive rail. So, because we got negative there, and that's the other side of the circuit, negative. We don't have to worry about, uh, about that, but the positive. We don't want a direct connection from positive to negative, and uh, having that resistor really being the only thing to limit the current. So I accidentally wired it that way. Without a resistor here, well, I was uh, practicing this, and I realized my mistake, but I had the power on, so limiting the current saved that. Now, we will just quickly look at this again. That uh, We have our Schmidt trigger, so the main thing, we have a solid on and off, and also, we have a little wiggle room right there. So if a voltage is just kind of shuddering up and down a tiny bit, this makes it where it has to sh shudder a whole lot more before it will affect the uh, load. So that's the hysteresis. Now, let's look at what is actually going on. And I already showed you the power supply. It has alligator clips that it delivers power through. And I clip them to jumpers, put those jumpers to the rail, and then I have other jumpers. So if I power one rail, it powers the other rail. Now, We'll see here that when the LED is on, so I have to get this more positive, the trim pod. I have to get it positive enough where the output turns on. So the reason why, and you'll notice too, with the power supply, we have about 20 milliamps of current. Well, the LED is on. Well, the LED is off. 
20 milliamps of current. So current's not changing, you know, maybe maybe a spec, but uh, current's holding steady whether the load is on or off. And so the reason why is because when the LED is on, the transistor that basically controls whether the LED is on or off is actually off. And so you can see that we have the uh, power supply here, 5 volts, going through the uh, resistor and then now the LED, it's not on the, the diagram there, but uh, it's going through that resistor and the LED. So that's setting the current. The transistor's off. It's as if the transistor doesn't exist. Current's going through the resistor and LED to ground. And the reason why is because we have the trim pot high enough where we broke about the uh, 0 0.6 volts or so that uh, it takes to get this transistor to conduct. So while that transistor is conducting, whatever current gets through this resistor goes to the base and then gets sucked to the uh, base to emitter there and then to ground like that. But uh, while that transistor is on, we have a connection from the negative rail through the resistor, but uh, then through the transistor to the base of that transistor, holding that transistor off. So that's why that transistor is off, because right now the base is connected to the negative rail, which is how you hold transistors off. Now, we're going to turn this transistor off, and then the load is going to turn off right there. And thanks to that resistor, we have to make a, a wiggle room. So that's kind of changing the voltage that the uh, bases rely on. Now, the, trend, the uh, LED is off. That's because this transistor is off. So now it's as if this transistor doesn't exist. So the uh, resistor over here, the 470 ohm resistor, now it can provide a positive voltage to the base of that transistor because it's not getting sucked to the negative rail. So it's going through that resistor, through that jumper, to the base, and then the base to the emitter with uh, the voltage being held up a little bit by this uh, resistor here. But for the most part, it is making this transistor conduct. So as far as the load is concerned, we have a pretty much direct connection to the negative rail. And the other side of the load, the other side of the LED, is the negative rail. So there's no voltage difference. Zero volts on both sides, for the most part. Uh, enough, in any case, to make sure an LED is completely on or off, because it blocks a certain amount of voltage. And uh, so a tiny bit of voltage buildup will not turn an LED on. But uh, in any case, that is the uh, basic uh, property of that. So again, this is an old uh, diagram, as I said before, I actually like the uh, 120 ohm resistor a little bit better than the 22 ohm, but I think we saw pretty good that uh, the hysteresis needed for the 22 ohm resistor. So I don't think that's terribly important. But in uh, any case, higher value resistors did not work out well. And uh, I think I do have the 150 on here. But uh, maybe I don't. So never mind about that. So in any case, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.